I'll find a volume on non-uniform grid. Still, we have a, a single spatial dimension, but the space is now divided by a non-uniform set of grid points. So we have x0, we have xn, and we have x1, x2, and the spacing between the axes are no longer going to be uniform. If you think of the way we formulated finite volume, there is practically no difference between how we are discretizing a uniform grid and non-uniform grid. We are still going to define a u, u uh, one here. So let's let me rename the grid points to be x of half, x of one and half, x and two and half, three and half, etc. And this is going to be n and half. So we still have our volumes being named integers. Particularly, we define ui as the cell average. Now the cell size is x of i plus half minus x of i minus half. We no longer have a uniform delta i. So let's call this delta x of i, the size of the ith cell. Integration over x i minus half to x i plus half of u times dx. We have a volume average like that. Remember, the integral form of the equation applies to any interval. So if we apply the integral form of the equation, we get dui dt would be equal to 1 over delta x i, the derivative of the total amount of quantity inside that volume. The derivative of that is the flux at i minus half minus the flux at i plus half. Right? Now, we still are going to use finite volume approximation to approximate these fluxes. And the approximation would work in very similar ways. Okay. And that is going to give us uh, the same kind of final volume solution as we had before. So for example, let's work it out uh, for a very simple scheme. So, so let's copy the same DTT burgers we worked on last lecture to DDT of a non-uniform grid. Okay. Uh, we're going to name it non-uniform. So the input of that, we need to make a grid. So let's make a worst possible grid for ourselves. Let's make n equal to, let's say, 100. And let's just make x to be a random. Is it rand or random? Rand maybe. Okay, so x is basically a random set of points within zero and one. Uh, actually, I want to make it n minus one because that's the interior points, and I want to append zero and one in the beginning. So x, I would make zero in the beginning. I want to sort uh, x in the middle, and I put one there. So if I plot x, it's basically a pretty um, non-ideal set of points. So let me plot x and uh, zeros 101. Uh, plot it like that. So this is going to be our grid points. In some places it's terrible, some places it's, it's, it's white. Okay, so let's, let's try it with that. Let's make x to be global so that I can uh, use this uh, in the function. So let me make global x. n is still going to be a length of u, that's right, and the dx is now x of 2 to n minus, minus x 1 to n minus 1. So this is my dx which is no longer constant but a length i array, a length n array. So 
uh, we are going to be performing the reconstruction. So, so uh, for simplicity, let's let's make our reconstruction to be let's make our limiter to be zero for now. Okay, because when we have a non-uniform grid, we need to also adapt our limiter with the different x i's. For example, when we compute our slope, the slope needs to be the slope needs to be considering half of the delta x in one cell plus the half of another delta x in another cell, right? So because if we have a non-uniform grid, the slope from here to here needs to be taking half of the slope, uh, half of the grid size in, in two adjacent cells. But let's, uh, let's, let's uh, avoid that complexity for now. So if we avoid that complexity, uh, we are going to reconstruct the, basically our u plus u plus half left is going to be the solution, the cell average on the left of the interface. u plus half right is going to be the solution cell average at the right of the interface. We are still going to apply good enough scheme and uh, uh, this is going to be dot divide. So everything else is going to be pretty much the same, right? So in MATLAB, let's let's compute x center to be x one to n minus one plus x two to n divided by two, and uh, let's say our u zero is sine of two pi times x center. If we plot x center u uh, u zero, uh, this is still our initial solution, the same as what we had last time. So now let's solve it using ODE forty five DDT non uniform zero to let's say point five using u zero as initial condition. Uh, we have a solution. So let's plot x center and u to see what the solution look like right okay so that's what the solution looks like uh, it's a still a first order accurate scheme and uh, because we have a uh, we have a non-uniform grid. The amount of dissipation we are going to have, we are experiencing, depends on where the sharp feature of the solution lies. If the sharp feature of the solution travels through a bigger cell, we experience more dissipation error. If it travels through a smaller cell, we experience less dissipation error. So the solution goes uh, not. So the, the dissipation no longer acts as if it's a it's a constant amount of dissipation. This thing is a little bit weakly, but like we still get a solution that looks pretty good. All right. So this is uh, uh this is how we can apply finite volume schemes in the non-uniform grid. Really minimum change to what we have to do on uniform grid. The limiter would require you to do a little bit more work uh, adjusting the different grid sizes, but still minor change.